I would like to pretty much welcome everyone today to our session on Rethink, which is a new program being offered by District 7030. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Sean Patty, and uh, today we're going to more or less be covering what exactly is the Rethink program, uh, how it's being offered to Rotary and Rotaract clubs in District 7030, uh, you know, what benefits it will have, uh, who it's really targeting, who, by the way, is mainly uh, it's a youth-based program, so it's targeting persons, you know, kind of between the ages of 17 to 19, uh, sorry, 7 to 19 or so. Um, we wanted to give clubs an opportunity to understand what the program is, understand how they can uh, adopt it into their projects for the year, uh, give you an idea of how it can, how it works, the benefits of it, uh, how you can access it, what your responsibilities will be. And emphasize that, you know, this is a partnership deal and that uh, the entire thing is provided to us completely free, uh, which is, you know, just really awesome. Uh, the context of it is that Rethink revolves around, uh, you know, issues such as cyberbullying and online harassment, which, as we all know, is something that happens and is prevalent everywhere in the world. Uh, and, you know, the persons that it tends to affect extremely in some cases, or in a lot of cases, unfortunately, uh, are young persons, right? Uh, they are very much attuned with communicating, you know, via mobile devices and uh, using anything from social media to messaging apps to whatnot. And sometimes, you know, it's not all good, right? Sometimes they get picked on. Sometimes they, you know, may find themselves being uh, harassed uh, by one or more persons. And it affects them, and unfortunately, it affects them in a very negative way. Uh, it can cause a lot of social anxiety disorders. Uh, you know, it can cause, in extreme cases, kids to really just withdraw. Uh, you know, in the past, there have been studies that done and, and that we've seen, I'm sure that we've heard of, where kids take it to an extreme. And, you know, unfortunately, it, it, it has led in some cases to kids, you know, hurting themselves or even committing suicide. So it's something that we always thought was a very prevalent issue that we can, you know, as a, as Rotary and Rotaract clubs, we can pick up and, and deal with and offer possible solutions to young persons and to our communities. Uh, and it's something that again is, you know, very readily available in terms of what this program is offering. It's, it's something that's readily available. It's prepackaged. Um, it is something that can start any time during the course of a year. There's no real set, uh, you know, start or end time to it. So it's pretty much very adaptable and accommodating. Um, you know, we are looking at opportunities within our district for partnerships and for uh, collaborations with other organizations and, and, you know, programs that can, you know, deliver something uh, to persons in need and where Rotary fits in and where Rotaract fits in is the means to deliver those projects and programs and, and resources and assistance. And that's what this is, this collaboration is an example of. It's an example of, you know, uh, Rethink as an organization, as a group and as a program, having a really good offering, having a really good resource available and joining forces with Rotary to help deliver that program to young persons and to communities and to persons in need who can benefit from it. So with that being said, and providing that context, let me uh, let me kind of introduce our speaker today. Uh, her name is Trisha Prabhu. She is an amazing person. She has uh, founded, you know, Rethink, and it's uh, kind of, what do we call it? Uh, uh, charitable arm, um, Rethink Citizens. Uh, uh, to more or less help persons, you know, that have been victims to things like cyberbullying and online harassment and whatnot. But, you know, it started uh, a few years back. I wouldn't say how many, but it started a few years back when Trisha developed a mobile app uh, and called it Rethink. And since then, things have just evolved. And it's where Rethink is no longer just about a mobile app. It's, it's a full-on program. It's something that offers almost a holistic solution. Uh, from the establishment of chapters in schools that kids can, you know, consistently and sustainably be part of and 
continue positive messaging uh, to this latest uh, offering, which is the free curriculum that, you know, directly targets young persons, whether they be in elementary school, middle school, high school, or for us, primary school and secondary school levels, and really drills down a bit more and gives them certain tools and resources and makes them aware of what it is that they need to be on the lookout for. And if they do see incidents of, you know, harassment and cyberbullying and stuff like that, how to really kind of address it. So that's what we're going to kind of look into and delve a little bit deeper in today in terms of what this rethink curriculum is. Uh, we're also going to touch on, you know, why Rotary clubs and Rotary Act clubs should get involved in it, who can benefit from it. And then last but not least, we're going to tell you guys how you can really uh, get involved and how you can sign up to be part of this entire program. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Trisha and let her pretty much kind of describe to you guys uh, what Rethink is and, you know, how it really is set up and works. Wonderful. All you, Trisha. Thank you so much, Sean, for that very kind introduction and for organizing this webinar. And hello, everyone. Um, it is so wonderful to be here with you all. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Um, as Sean mentioned, my name is Trisha Prabhu. And I have the honor of serving as the founder and CEO of Rethink and the founder and president of Rethink Citizens. As Sean mentioned, our charitable arm, our 501c3 arm of the work that we do with Rethink. Um, so thrilled to be here with you all and hoping, you know, in the, in the next 15 minutes to start by, as Sean mentioned, sharing a little bit about Rethink, Rethink Citizens, our origins, what first inspired me to get into this work, what exactly it is that we, you know, what it exactly it is that we do, um, how we work with, you know, incredible partners like District 7030, um, and then hoping to share a little bit about the curriculum um, that we are so, so excited that we get to make available to you all for free, um, you know, what it is, um, what it looks like, uh, you know, the types of benefits that we see, you know, students uh, receive from, you know, engaging with the curriculum, um, and, you know, our vision for this collaboration and the kind of impact that we hope to we hope to achieve in the, in these communities. So um, with that, you know, let me start by kind of going back and sharing a little bit about Rethink's origins and, and how we first came to be. Um, so as Sean mentioned, it was a number of years ago, um, actually when I was a teenager, um, that I first, you know, started to hear and learn about the issue of cyberbullying. Um, as a young person, I had experienced online harassment myself. So it wasn't, you know, a complete shock when I started seeing news articles and, you know, stories on TV about cyber harassment and some of its worst effects. But it was those stories, reading those stories, that first prompted me to realize, oh my goodness, this is a silent pandemic affecting youth all around the world. You know, as, as a victim of online harassment, like so many victims, I thought for a long time that, you know, something was wrong with me and it was just a me issue, um, that it was solely affecting me as an individual. And reading those stories was kind of my first wake up call to realizing that no, cyberbullying was actually an issue affecting youth everywhere. Um, and it was just really shocking and, and heartbreaking. Um, but what really frustrated me um, was realizing that at the time, you know, the, the, the number one solution to tackle cyberbullying was simply to ask victims of cyberbullying to block the cyberbully and tell a parent. It sounds like a really, you know, kind of effective solution. It sounds, you know, well-intentioned. It certainly was. But in fact, research consistently finds that 90% of cyberbullying victims choose not to tell anyone when they've been harassed. Moreover, that type of solution, that type of reactive solution puts the burden on the victim to act and it doesn't actually tackle the cyberbullying at the root of the problem, right? Which is with the cyberbully. It doesn't teach the cyberbully key skills, right? Like what it means to be a responsible digital citizen or why it is that their words matter online. The actual root of the problem is not tackled. Um, and that was deeply, deeply frustrating to me. And so that was when I kind of had this aha moment of, you know, we have this, this, this long history, right, of tackling cyberbullying reactively right, by, by putting the burden on the victim, what if instead of doing that, we actually try and tackle cyberbullying proactively before it happens at the source with the cyberbully? In particular, what if we give young people, right, who are always on their devices in this frictionless digital universe, a chance to pause, review, and reconsider what it is that they're saying? Um, that was my idea. It was a very simple idea. 
you know, I would develop a technology that could detect cyberbullying and online harassment and then prompt users, prompt young people to just take a second to pause and rethink. Um, the idea was also rooted in a lot of brain science. Um, you know, we know, for instance, that young people's brains um, actually take a long time to develop and that adolescents and teenagers in particular, you know, in the heat of the moment, particularly in situations where it's hard to consider the consequences of their actions, right? Like when they're looking at a phone as opposed to someone's face, um, you know, can make decisions that they later regret, right? Might not think through, you know, the implications of their decision. And so, you know, my idea was given that we know, right, that the adolescent brain is not equipped to make those, you know, those, those um, you know, intentional thought through decisions, let's actually give young people a chance to pause and think. Let's really, you know, ask them and prompt them to go through that full decision-making process before they say or do something that could be offensive. And so it started as an idea. Um, you know, I wanted to see first if that idea would work. Um, I ended up conducting a science experiment that was later acclaimed by Google and MIT, among other institutions, that found that over 93% of the time, youth that received that rethink alert change their mind. And from there, it ended up becoming a technology product. And as Sean has mentioned in the last couple of years, um, has actually become so, so much more than that. Um, we have in fact become, you know, a, a global movement to tackle cyberbullying. So the technology, the Rethink app is now just one arm of the work that we do. We've also realized that there are a number of other ways to you know, ensure that we are tackling cyberbullying in a preventative matter, right? Really getting to the root of the harm. And education is one of those key levers, right? Because education, when we bring it into classrooms, it not only you know, enables young people to learn key digital literacy skills, right? How to communicate and interact with one another respectfully, how to create healthy boundaries, right? Between them and their devices so that they can have healthy relationships with those devices. It not only does that, right? It sets these young people up for success in the digital world and beyond. Um, and so, you know, that that is incredibly powerful. The other thing that we see, you know, when we implement this curriculum is young people are actually much more willing to talk and report cyberbullying incidents to parents, to teachers, right? When we foster these conversations about these harms and equip young people with the skills to take them on, they're also much more likely to be transparent, to be open about what they're experiencing. And that means that we can support them, right? We can assist them in ways that we're otherwise, you know, sometimes not able to do. Um, so, you know, that's another key benefit. Um, so that's, you know, one big lever that we have, the education lever. And then our third lever um, is, you know, some of the advocacy work that we do. Um, Anti-cyberbullying awareness, for instance. Sean mentioned chapters. Um, you know, that's a huge part of what we do. We try and actually equip youth um, with, um, you know, the agency and autonomy to be champions and leaders of the anti-hate movement. And that's something that the curriculum actually touches on as well. So those are our kind of our three key levers today, the technology, the education, and the advocacy. So, you know, we we built this, you know, this big movement. And then, you know, a couple of a couple of years ago, I started to talk with folks in my community about um, you know, feeling like we wanted to go beyond the existing work that we were doing and, you know, make some of our offerings available to communities around the world for free because we know the kind of impact that it can have and we know the barriers, right? That, you know, um, you know, uh, financial barriers can pose to accessing these types of resources. And we wanted every young person to have the chance to be safe online because I, I firmly believe that digital safety is a human right. Uh, and so that is how you know, we came to launch Rethink Citizens, our charitable arm. So Rethink Citizens makes all of Rethink's offerings, our technology, our education, our advocacy, available to communities around the world for free. And we're starting now with the educational component, um, making those resources available to communities around the world for free. And we're so thrilled to be able to do that in collaboration with District 7030. Um, we're so grateful. Um, so, you know, through this collaboration, um, you know, our vision is being able to bring this curriculum to each and every, um, you know, one of the students in your clubs, um, and hopefully to be able to foster some really important learning and conversations about cyberbullying um, and about digital literacy. So that's a little bit about Rethink and Rethink Citizens. Uh, I know that that was a bit of a long-winded introduction, but just wanted, you know, to give you all the chance to learn a little bit about our ethos, you know, um, you know our founding story, our origins, um, and what it is that we really are all about. 
So that's Rethink, Rethink Citizens. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the curriculum. So this um, K through 12 curriculum, um, which as Sean mentioned, you know, is, is um, grade specific. We have curriculum for elementary school students or primary school students, middle school students, um, so students in that kind of between, you know, adolescent age and high school students. Um, so we have it, a curriculum that is tailored to these different age groups. Um, and it covers a range of key digital literacy topics. So, you know, everything from identifying cyberbullying to tackling cyberbullying, being an upstander, um, you know, again, creating boundaries between you and your device, um, you know, tackles niche topics, right? Like how to be safe when you're gaming online. Um, it also tackles, um, you know, topics like how young people can get involved and become activists to take on hate in their community. Um, so again, the curriculum really tries to set them up to be leaders um, in their communities in the fight against hate, both online and offline. So we cover a range of topics. Um, and the way that the curriculum is structured is it is designed to be super, super, super easy to implement so that any facilitator can implement it. Um, you know, we know that you all have so many other obligations and things going on. We wanted to create something that would be really, really easy for you all to roll out. Um, and so the way it works is there are three components to the curriculum. There is a facilitator guide, there is a student workbook, and there are slides or a presentation. So the facilitator guide contains all of the instructional content. So any person, um, you know, whether an educator or a club leader or any other type of facilitator can easily read this facilitator guide and it tells the facilitator, you know, what materials are needed for a lesson, what exactly the facilitator should say during the lesson. So it literally includes all of the instructional content. So you don't have to think about, okay, what am I going to say, you know, in front of, in front of the students in my club, we've already prepared all of that for you. The student workbook um, is a workbook for students. Um, that students can easily use. You can either print it out or use it digitally. Um, and that's where students will complete activities and exercises that correspond to the lessons. And then the third component, the presentations or slides, um, this is just visual content um, to support the facilitator as they're delivering um, the instructional content that's in that facilitator guide. So those are the three key components. The curriculum in total is 18 lessons, but the beauty of the curriculum, um, and again, Sean mentioned this, um, is how flexible it is. Um, you don't have to do all 18 lessons. You know, we've worked with communities that choose to do only a small subset of those lessons, maybe lessons that they feel are especially pertinent for the young people that they're working with, right? Um, you can pick up, um, you know, certain lessons, skip over, you know, a couple of others, move into other ones. So it really is, you know, designed um, to be leveraged however is best and most easy for you. And again, that is really what we wanted to, um, you know, to achieve with this. Um, another key thing I'll note, um, you know, the lessons themselves, um, you know, can, can, can again, very flexible, can, you know, can either be delivered, you know, in a 30 minute segment or up to a one hour segment. Um, that 45 minute sweet spot is usually where we see um, a lot of facilitators land. Um, but, you know, you can really, again, you know, use the content in that facilitator guide um, and your own facilitator judgment um, to, to kind of be flexible um, and find the right balance based on your context and how you're hoping to deliver this curriculum. Um, the only other thing that I'll note, you know, with regards to the curriculum um, is um, just that, you know, again, you know, the benefits that we see um, are, are, are truly incredible. You know, um, we've implemented this curriculum around the world. So for context, the technology, our educational materials and our advocacy today have, you know, been shared with youth in 136 nations globally. Um, so we've had the chance to do this work all over the world. And the benefits that we see are enormous. So the young people that we speak with, you know, come out of the program, um, you know, saying that they, you know, feel more confident using devices and the internet, um, feeling like they understand digital harms and are prepared to tackle them. Um, parents that we speak with see, you know, that their young people are engaging um, in more healthy digital behaviors. They're really happy to see that. Um, we even hear from educators that the environment in schools improve, right? That students, you know, interactions are more positive, um, which is incredible. Um, and the long-term learning, I think, is also really powerful because when we go back and we speak with these youth, you know, even months later, they're retaining these lessons, they're implementing them in their lives. Um, and, and that is just, that is so incredible, right? That is, you know, what we, um, what we want to achieve. So um, and those benefits are, are, are just really monumental and, and super exciting for us um, to see. Um, and so, you know, I, I um, really think that there's just so much potential for impact um, with this collaboration. So, you know, speaking of which, you know, 
our our goal and you know our our motive you know our incentive in in this collaboration is to make as much impact as we possibly can with you all and so you know as i mentioned before the vision is to tackle cyberbullying and i hope you all know that you know as we pursue this collaboration with district 7030 we're going to be doing absolutely everything we can um, to ensure that the collaboration is as successful as possible and to support each and every one of you. Um, you know, I, for instance, I'm, you know, really excited to be involved as much as I possibly can, you know, to maybe come and speak to a club or two, uh, maybe a couple more, um, you know, maybe all of them, you know, over the course of the year, um, you know, and, and um, you know, be able to share a little bit about the Rethink message. Um, all that's to say, you know, we're just so, so excited to support this partnership and collaboration and to be involved, you know, as much as we possibly can. With that said, um, you know, for, for organizational purposes, to make things, um, you know, as easy as possible, um, District 7030 is really going to be, um, you know, Rethink's point of contact, Rethink Citizens' point of contact, and our clearinghouse um, for interested clubs. So if you're interested in participating in this collaboration, um, please be in touch with Sean, you know, Maurice, Maria, um, the incredible team at District 7030 that's helping, you know, shepherd and, and spearhead this collaboration. Um, and they will kind of be um, the mediator between our organizations, you know, We Think We Think Citizens and your clubs. So we'll be working with them to distribute, right, um, to ensure that, you know, um, you are getting all the content you need to troubleshoot any problems. And so this will just, you know, make communication a little bit easier, um, make everything work organizationally a little bit more seamlessly. Um, and hopefully, um, you know, enable us to, you know, leverage just the incredible resources and, you know, local knowledge and context that District 7030 has um, to make this as successful um, and impactful of a partnership as possible. So I know that I've been speaking for quite some time now, uh, a little over 15 minutes, of course, I had to, I had to run long. Um, but I hope that you all enjoyed, you know, learning a little bit more about Rethink, Rethink Citizens, this collaboration, um, and, you know, what it is that we hope to achieve with you all. Um, I think now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Maurice, who's going to speak a little bit on, you know, um, what it is that clubs have to get out of this partnership and, you know, um, why he's so excited for clubs to get involved. Thank you all so much. Thanks so much, Trisha. Actually, just before Maurice uh, jumps in, I'm sorry, Maurice. Uh, I just wanted to actually say two things. Um, one is uh, I'm, I just posted into the chat box a link to a story from a couple of years ago, which is actually about a uh, Rotarian uh, whose son uh, actually died as a result of cyber grooming and, uh, you know, got caught up in online gaming and uh just you know was not aware of how he needed to protect himself and it's 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 a bit of a sad story but it's definitely one that hits the mark in terms of you know how extreme uh certain cases can get and one of the reasons and rationales we need to keep in mind about why we why this is an issue that you know is so prevalent and we need to get involved in right because one of the one of the key things that Rotary always, you know, tries to be involved with and make sure that we take some type of re uh, proactive action is is when it comes to young people um, through our youth services arms, through Interact, through Early Act, through Rotaract. We have definitely over the years, you know, looked to not just inspire young people to get involved in their communities, but to also help them uh, become better citizens, become more aware of of opportunities as well as to protect them so you know if you guys uh, have a chance definitely take take a look at that link and and that story if you ever needed a reason why this is such a, a critical issue and even just a way of how it you know connects to our rotary family that story will definitely give you uh, a bit of a, an incentive uh with that uh i definitely want to give uh maurice and maria an opportunity to each kind of give us, uh, you know, as district leaders, give us an idea from their perspective, uh, how and why uh, a program like this and a collaboration like this can really benefit clubs and why clubs should get involved. And just as a reminder to everyone, if please make sure that you've selected the English channel if you are listening in on English, as Maurice will be speaking in French, and we want to make sure that you hear our interpreter correctly. Thank you. Uh, all, all over to you, Maurice. Thank you, Sean, for, uh, donné la parole. Uh, for this opportunity to donc, speak. Uh, si vous voulez, uh, je if suis you, vous, I am like many of you, I am a spectator of 
with regard to cyber bullying. And also, I, I, I feel uh, that I am helpless not knowing exactly how to act. How to react. John invited me one day to discuss and to discover this program. And I discovered something which gives me hope. And I'm saying that maybe there is a possibility to change this trend where we are victims us parents, uh, us children, la, la and globally the society. I would, uh, et, I uh, asked him to meet Trisha, and I meet somebody that's brilliant, that is passionate, and which uh, gives us the opportunity with her work, something very innovative, ce, because this is a crisis. Et it is a way to globally tackle the problem. Everything that could be done that we have not succeeded so far to stop this problem. I discover a program today which will allow us, I'm certain, if we try it, to be able to reach to, to touch this uh, virus directly within our school, within all these organs that are being affected. And it's a revelation for me because I am looking for an exit. Thanks for the Rethink program. That's why I was very, I was insisting to have um, most people to participate. It is something that's really innovative. It is something I am sure after having looked at the success of this program around the world and also the monitoring of this program. The daily uh, consequences, the daily effects, I am sure that you will have, you will gain much. In particular, what is important is to bring back the citizenship in our school, in our club, around our relationship with others. Something that today is disappearing, if not completely from our educational system. All of us, we have, uh, we have, we have action in our club uh, regarding cyber and bullying and harassment. But very often, we are not fully satisfied. There are a few results, but really, with time, it fades. And today, we can have a program that is innovative in school, uh, where if we manage to implement it, we will have effects that are durable because the, we will sensitize the young people, their behavior in the society, and they have a reference for the rest of their life. And this is where it is innovative. This is where it is something that we must bring to our children so that they become they own their own behavior. And I am looking at the French-speaking program. Uh, when we present it to our, the authorities, the ministers in the national education, where we could actually introduce this program within the curriculum of the school 
to bring back the citizenship, to bring back this respect for others in our society, we would achieve something extraordinary. And I am convinced that we will have an expected result. And the Rethink program, founded by Trisha Bring, offers this opportunity to use a tool that is innovative, that is wholesome, and that brings an answer to many different situations. And this is why I will encourage you to familiarize yourself to go on the website of WSIC program and, and I will hope that we, I will be able also to communicate with you to help you go through this. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Maurice. Uh, we'll now uh, hear from the uh, third member of our, our District 7030 Rethink team, uh, Maria Mohamed Baraj. Maria, over to you. Thanks very much, Sean, and to the audience joining, for joining us today to discuss a pressing issue that affects us all, especially the youth in communities, that is cyberbullying and hate speech. It has affected me personally, as I recently discovered that earlier this year that one of my younger family members, she's only 14 years old, was bullied earlier this year and it affected her so much that she's now in therapy and on antidepressants. This is one of the main reasons that I believe in a program like Rethink, which as you would have heard in previous presentations, is dedicated to conquering cyberbullying and stopping heat. The why behind Rethink is both compelling and essential. In a world where the digital realm is an integral part of our daily lives, our young people are exposed to unprecedented challenges, including cyberbullying. Rethink's mission, as Trisha mentioned, is to provide a solution, a lifeline for our youth to pause, review, and rethink before they say something harmful or offensive online. But Rethink's mission goes beyond just its technology. It extends to education, to empowering our youth with digital literacy, and the anti-hate know-how they need. Now let's consider the stark reality. A UNICEF poll conducted in 30 countries, including Trinidad and Tobago, reveals that more than a third of young people have reported being victims of online bullying. Cyberbullying, like traditional bullying, leaves deep scars affecting self-esteem, academic performance, and often leading to lifelong trauma. The anonymous nature of cyberbullying creates a culture of impunity, making it difficult to hold bullies accountable. It happens outside the legal reach of schools, making it a pervasive issue that can occur 24 seven with dire consequences for our youth. Just recently in August, 2023, we saw trouble, troubling incidences in Trinidad and Tobago with explicit images of minors and women posted on their on Instagram accounts. Separately to this incident in June of this year, our US ambassador to our country highlighted an increase in local bullying, cyberbullying, and violence in schools since the return to in-person learning following the COVID-19 pandemic. These incidents can have devastating consequences from embarrassment to even thoughts of suicide. Additionally, the statistics from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services are alarming. Victims of cyberbullying are more than four times as likely to report thoughts of suicide and attempts. Cyberbullies often do not comprehend the effects of their actions on their victims. And this is where the Rethink program steps in to target cyberbullies before they can cause harm. Now you're probably asking why should our clubs get involved in supporting the Rethink program? Firstly, Rethink is simple to onboard, as mentioned before, making it accessible to all. And it aligns perfectly with the core objectives of organizations like Rotary. For example, Youth Service. Youth Service. Rethink serves our youth 
empowering them to navigate the digital world safely. Peace building and conflict resolution. By addressing cyberbullying and hate speech, Rethink contributes to a more peaceful online environment. Education. The Rethink cur curriculum offers valuable education on digital literacy and anti-hate awareness. Community service. By supporting Rethink, clubs can actively contribute to the betterment of their communities. Mental health and wellness. Rethink promotes mental well-being by countering the harmful effects of cyberbullying and girls' empowerment, where it plays a crucial role in empowering girls and young women to thrive in the digital age. In closing, the Rethink program is not just about technology. It's about building a safer and more compassionate digital world for our youth. It's about equipping them with the tools and knowledge to navigate the digital landscape with confidence and empathy. But the strength of this program lies in the collective action. The more clubs and schools that get involved, the greater impact we can all make. Together, we can conquer cyberbullying and stop hate, ensuring that our youth can try thrive in the digital age. Thank you for your attention, and I urge all of you to consider joining us in this vital mission. Together, we can make a difference and build a safe, online world for our youth. Thank you. Thanks so much, Priya, and, and and thanks to Maurice as well. And, you know, I hope that everybody, you know, kind of has a better idea of not just what the Rethink program is offering, but also, you know, the benefits of this collaboration between Rethink, Rethink Citizens, and District 7030 and our Rotary and Rotaract clubs. You know, again, uh, I'll emphasize it that, you know, uh, our youth are really important, uh, whether it's whether it's through our youth programs like Interact and Early Act, and or whether it's just youth in our community and, you know, taking an active role in something that is prevalent and prevalent as a as an issue, prevalent as a concern, prevalent as a, a problem, uh, you know, within uh, or among younger people, uh, you know, is something that we shouldn't ignore and it's something that we can through this program, take action on. So, you know, one of the things that we should try to do as Rotary and Rotaract clubs is seek out these opportunities. And that's what District 7030 is offering to clubs. It's an opportunity to kind of get involved. It's an opportunity to, uh, you know, tackle something that is there. It's not going to just disappear overnight. It's going to require us to get involved and it's going to require, you know, us to to help people and i think you know if it's one thing that we've all agreed upon as in becoming rotarians and rotaractors is that we're here to help and i think this is just one of the ways that we can help on something that we may not have ever considered before we may not be aware of as clubs and 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 as members that is happening within schools and and among young people but it's definitely something we can jump into and get involved with uh and do so in a very strategic way and in a very impactful way and in a very results oriented way and those are kind of you know some of the criteria that we're looking for especially when it comes to club projects and club activities is is impact it's sustainability and this program pretty much you know checks a lot of those boxes if not all of them so the next segment uh that i will kind of delve into a bit now that you've heard what the rethink program is now that you've heard uh you know why clubs can get involved and some of the benefits of clubs getting involved is I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can get involved. Uh, so I'll, I've whittled it down to pretty much a kind of four step process. Uh, the first step pretty much is learning a bit more about the program and, and not just whether it's you learning about the program or it's, it should be more about your club learning about the program. So, you know, if you're here representing your club, and I'm sure, you know, if you want to introduce a new project or a new activity to that club, you're going to have to speak to your club president or you speak to your club uh, service projects chair or you speak to your club's board. So, you know, you need some information with regards to the program and what it is. So please uh, go to the website uh, that's on the District 7030. Uh, sorry, go to the web page on the Rethink program that's on the District 7030 website. Uh, the link is in the chat box. It's in the resources button if you click it. Uh, you can always, you know, uh, shoot 
an email to myself, to Maria, to Maurice, if you need further information on it in order to present it to your club. But that's essentially step one, is learning exactly what the program is, exactly what it's offering, exactly what it's targeting, how it's going to, how it, you know, and, and what it is. Uh, once you have an interest from your club, let's go and move on to step two. Step two is, you know, identifying the target group that your club would like to offer or quote unquote sponsor the rethink program to or the rethink curriculum to. Uh, those target groups are essentially, like I said, uh, at the very beginning, uh, looking at young people between the ages of, let's say seven to about 19 years old. So for clubs that have, that do sponsor early act clubs for rotary clubs that do sponsor interact clubs, um, obviously early act and interact, uh, are built in almost no brainer, uh, target groups that rotary clubs can uh, have the curriculum, uh, implemented in. Yeah. So if you do have, uh, if you do spot, if your Rotary club does sponsor an interact club or it does sponsor an early act club, those are kind of, you know, your easy wins right there. You can liaise with the, uh, club facility, club advisor and, uh, make them aware of what the rethink curriculum is, what it, uh, what it targets and, and what the topics it cover and get them, you know, onboard it onto it and get them to help execute it. They can, you know, interact advisors and, and early act advisors can actually be the facilitators. One thing I will repeat, uh, which was said before by Trisha is the program itself is very flexible. The program itself is very accommodating. The curriculum is designed where a facilitator does not really require any, you know, specialized training, any specialized experience, pretty much uh, any one of us or any teacher or any member of a club or any advisor can pick up uh, the facilitator guide, follow it through and help execute the curriculum among students or among young people, I should say. So uh, step two really is about uh, identifying which group you would like to offer or quote unquote sponsor the curriculum to. If your club, however, does not have a sponsored interact or early act club, that's okay. It's not limited to interact and early act by any means. So even if you do have uh, a sponsored interact or early act club, it doesn't mean you have to limit it to just them. So it, in, in, in a case where let's say you're a rotor act club and you want to get involved in this program and you want to offer it to a group of young persons, there are so many opportunities within our respective countries and territories. Uh, where there are groups of young persons other than interact clubs or early act clubs. It could be within a school that your club has an, uh, a relationship with, whether it's the entire school or whether it's a single class in the school. Uh, that's obviously a target group, and that's a group that you can offer the program to. Um, there are so many uh, extracurricular clubs and, and groups and, young, and youth-oriented organizations that you know, a Rotary or Rotary Act Club may be affiliated with or may, a member may be affiliated with. Those are, again, groups that you can offer this curriculum to. So it could be something like a Scouts group, a Girl Guides group. Um, it could be something, you know, there, there are a lot of, in certain, in certain countries and territories within our region, there are a lot of, let's call them uh, police youth club groups. Um, there's just, you know, it's, there's no limit to it whatsoever. It should, however, be a formalized group. Uh, another one could be, you know, within certain communities, there are community based youth groups as well, uh, that can be targeted. So, as I said, there are limitless opportunities and there's really, you know, uh, if it's not an interact club or it's not an early act club, there are guaranteed, uh, ways of identifying a target group that the curriculum can be offered to and sponsored by your Rotary Act or Rotary Club. So that's the second step is identifying the who and, and who will receive the curriculum and who you would like to offer the curriculum to as a Rotary or Rotary Act Club. The third step is, uh, you know, in ha more or less formalizing it where once that interest by your club is, is checked off, once the target group that you would like to receive the curriculum is checked off. 
uh, you know, between Maria, Maurice, and myself, we will then work with your club and provide you with all the resources uh, to pass on to your target group, to your facilitator, to your group of young persons. Um, it would be, it would, you know, consist of the facilitator guide, the student workbooks, um, you know, the presentations that go along with each of the 18 modules or how many ever modules out of the 18 that, that, uh, that particular group would like to implement. Uh, and we will make sure that, you know, you have everything you need as a club, but also make sure that your target group has everything they need to implement the program. In addition to that, uh, you know, there are aspects of it that we would like each club to take responsibility for. While it's a completely free program, there is no charge whatsoever to it. We do ask clubs that want to be involved in it to kind of give back on a little something. And the give back is really simple. It's essentially uh, two things. One is uh, we are asking clubs to make sure that uh, there are pre and post curriculum surveys that are done and essentially it's uh those surveys are meant to provide a gauge prior to the execution of the curriculum where students are at where their mindset is at uh and then obviously after the curriculum after they've gone through it uh do another survey to see you know where things have changed where their perspectives have improved where what they've learned so clubs would be responsible for making sure that those pre and post surveys are completed and submitted. The second thing we would ask of clubs is, you know, where possible, we would love to get testimonials, testimonials from the young persons who are, who have completed the, the curriculum, testimonials from persons who have facilitated the curriculum and testimonials from members of your club who have directly been involved with the curriculum. Uh, you know, those testimonials again, provide a, a level of feedback that can, you know, more or less help gauge how the curriculum was received, what worked with it, what may not have worked with it, and all in all allow for things to be improved upon and enhanced as time goes by. Uh, the third thing is, uh, or fourth actually, the fourth thing and last part is, you know, again, once the, we would look for, uh, I would say quarterly, uh, unofficial reports back from clubs that get involved just to kind of get an idea of where things are at, um, where the, where the curriculum is at with your target group, how well they're progressing with it. If they need help with anything, if they've already finished it, um, you know, if, if you club, if you, your club plans to move on to another group, because you don't have to just offer it once. This is something as, you know, I've said, and as Trisha said, and Maria said, and Marisa said, this is it's so flexible and so accommodating that you can start it in uh, October with one group of, of kids in a school, and then you can start uh, another cohort of it with another group uh, in another school or with another, let's say, Interact Club or whatever have you. There's no real uh, specified start time or end time to the, pro to the curriculum. So, you know, a, a particular Rotary Club or Rotaract Club can offer this to multiple multiple groups, whether simultaneously or sequentially. It's totally up to you. Uh, but that more or less is kind of a very uh, summary way of looking at it. And I'll just reiterate the four steps one last time. The first is, you know, making sure that your club is adequately informed on what the program is, how it's offered, what the benefits are. And a lot of that information can be obtained from the Rethink Program webpage on our district website. The link for which is is in the chat box and as well as in the resources button. Uh, the second step is completing a sign up form that more or less states that you are interested, that you are making a commitment. We want clubs to be sincere about this. We want clubs to understand that this is a commitment in terms of time and effort. Uh, and it's not something that, you know, we want anybody taking casually or lightly because we really want to make an impact or we really want things to make a difference. Uh, the third step, you know, sorry, the second step was identifying which group you want to target. The third step is signing up uh, for the actual program using a, an online application form. And then, like I said, the fourth step is where we're looking for more feedback, right? So we're looking for, for quarterly reports. We're looking for testimonials. We're looking for pre and post survey information. 
uh, again, when it comes to the survey stuff, everything is provided to clubs. Everything will be sent to you guys to implement. Clubs do not have to design anything for themselves. They don't have to create anything for themselves. The effort really is in just getting it executed. And this is where this example of a partnership and a collaboration comes into play, where a club does not have to be the be all and end all for a project. It can it can essentially act as the executing arm of it. It can act as the connection between a source and a sink. And this is where we can find a great deal of success and, a, and, and still make a great deal of impact as well. So with that being said, uh, and I want to be respectful of everybody's time, uh, we have a few minutes that we can uh, answer and take some questions. Um, and so if you have uh, a question that you'd like to ask um, live, feel free. You can raise your hand. Um, we can accommodate questions in both English and French, if, you, if you'd like. Uh, so feel free, uh, please go ahead right now and raise your hands. Uh, in the meanwhile, while uh, we're waiting for that, we do have one question uh, that's coming in here from Anastasia, which uh, says that uh, 18 lessons were mentioned, but how long is each lesson? So each lesson, Anastasia, and for anybody else, uh, the way it's it's designed, it's designed to take anywhere from about 30 minutes all the way up to about an hour. But as Trisha mentioned, the target sweet spot time uh, frame for each lesson is about 45 minutes. And the reason that it was designed in that way was that it was designed to fit into what essentially would be the equivalent of one period of school, um, you know, during a, a, a school day. Uh, 40 to 45 minutes is usually how long a period lasts. So that's that's the sweet spot of it. Um, in terms of whether or not all 18 uh, lessons or all 18 modules have to be executed within a certain space of time, the answer really is not necessarily. Um, you know, it's difficult, especially within school environments or, with, or especially within any kind of uh, youth-based group to try and fit 18 instances of something in uh within a short space of time so you know there's a lot always going on uh, with kids right they're pretty busy sometimes busier than adults uh and so but the great thing is is this can be spread out over time ideally we would like to see uh anyone that starts the program try to see if they can complete it within one year uh but you know it can be spread out it can be spread out over multiple uh, terms or semesters in school. It can be spread out over, you know, a period of, of if you wanted to do one lesson a week, or if you wanted to do one lesson every couple of weeks or whatever, whatever is right. And whatever is, is easiest for the group of kids themselves, whether it's a class or a club, but the idea here is that they stick with it. The idea here is that, you know, they are committed to, to getting through uh, if not all 18, you know, whichever ones of the modules are most relevant and prevalent to them. Uh, separate and apart from that, uh, as I mentioned before, you can also uh, streamline it in a, in a particular way where uh, even let's say where it's uh, summer holidays, right? So kids usually have about two months during summer. Um, clubs can set up something specifically over that summer period whether it's through an existing summer camp or whether it's something through they something they want to run themselves and offer this 18 module curriculum to you know again interact clubs that they sponsor early act clubs that they sponsor or just groups of kids in their communities that they will bring together specifically to do this program over summer because kids are always looking to do something over summer and I think even more so parents are always looking for something for their kids to do over summer. So again, this, uh, you know, can be done during school, during the academic year of the active months of the academic year, or it could be done in the inactive months of the academic year. That's how flexible it is. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I will again, give an opportunity to anybody. If they want to ask any questions, they can feel free and raise their hand. Uh, if not, I will definitely, uh, let. Trisha, Maria, or Maurice uh, jump back in if they wanted to say anything additional. Trisha, I'll, I'll start with you. 
Thank you so much, Sean, for that um that great answer to that question. I think you you covered everything. And no, I mean just to just to wrap up, uh, I, and uh, you know, folks have any other questions, um, definitely feel free to share. But um, just to wrap up again, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude on behalf of Rethink and Rethink Citizens um, to first and foremost District 7030, um, Sean, Maurice, Maria. Um, it's it's such an honor to be able to work with you all, and so we're really excited for this collaboration. And I want to thank all of you, um, you know, club leaders for for joining us, all the clubs um, for hopping on and um, you know being interested in this program. I think the potential for impact here is enormous. Um, I know that you know young people are really going to benefit from having these conversations, from learning these skills, from learning alongside fellow young people and thinking about the role that they can play in realizing a more safe, kind, inclusive internet. Um, and so I'm just really thankful to each and every one of you for you know seeing the importance of that mission, for investing um, in that mission. Um, it is an investment. It is time, but I think that it's going to pay is, is really, really all of you um, on this journey and I'm excited for, for everything ahead. Thank you for, for coming and for the time. Thanks so much, Trisha. Uh, Maria, Maurice, any uh, any last words you want to want to say before we wrap up? Um, it's just as you and Trisha said to ask everybody to reach out to us and thanks to those who already started um, on WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. So we look forward to working with you. And thank you. Maurice, I'll, I'll let you have the last word in French, my friend. Oui, uh, je disais simplement que I was saying that fois, once more, I could see a new perspective to work against this de civisme dans site le, le and to bring de, more citizenship de, more de, within donc, the behavior of the young people. It is this opportunity that I would like to see and also this opportunity that open doors to improve our youth, the condition of our youth. And I will invite ce, ce all the clubs of 7030 to take this opportunity et de vraiment jouer and le to rôle qui est really play the part, de vie, de change lives, to create hope, des and to open opportunities for others. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maurice. Thank you to you. Thank you to Maria. Thank you to Trisha, especially. Uh, I want to make sure that we're very cognizant of time. I do apologize for any mix-up uh, with regards to the start time for today. Uh, however, I'm grateful that uh, this many of you stuck around, and uh, hopefully you guys um, will be joining the program uh, sooner rather than later. We will make sure that you get a follow-up email after this, uh, after this session that kind of, again, repeats a lot of the information that we provided It'll also give you the links so where you can go and get more information, the links to sign up, uh, you know, links to contact us if you need to, to ask any other questions. Uh, but for now, thank you so much to everybody for joining. We really appreciate it. We hope you uh, learned something new today and we hope that you realize the opportunity and will, you know, jump on board and take part in the program. So thank you once again. Uh, and that's about it for us. Take care.